The video for today is, uh, it's a project that's very near and dear to my heart. I took some time on my day off. I actually, I took a vacation day, um, grabbed my camera, went down to the area where I work, and my goal was to go out and talk to some homeless people, get their perspective on life, how they got into situations that they got into, um, and just some stuff like that. I ended up having a couple of very good conversations, and one of the conversations I had with, was with the man you're going to see in the video today. Uh, this is Scott. Um, if you've been following my channels for any period of time, you'll know who Scott is. A little bit of backstory on Scott. It's not all necessarily in this video, but uh, Scott was a young man that grew up in Perkerington, Ohio, a suburb of Columbus. He was a tremendous athlete in high school, very popular guy. He got in with the wrong crowds at a very young age, um, ended up doing some serious time for selling narcotics. Um, in one of his previous videos, he said, I think he said he was caught with a bag with something like 10,000 doses of acid that he was using or that he was selling for um, an organized a gang, <laughs> a nationally recognized gang. Um, he did some prison time for that. He said that he became addicted to drugs while in prison and then got out and continued to do more crimes to support his drug habit. Drug habit. Um, some of these details were off camera and I couldn't reproduce this in the interview, but um, he's done ma many stents in, in prison for drug offenses and um, felony theft offenses that all stem from the drug habit that he has. Um, I don't know. That's about it. The other, the other thing I guess that's worth mentioning is that he was recently in jail. I don't know why he was in jail, but he was in jail for a short period of time. And while there, he was sleeping on the third bunk. Um, he has a lot of, because of his long history of drug activity, um, he has a lot of involuntary movements with his body, particularly when he's sleeping due to that, he fell off of a third bunk and broke his neck. Um, he was treated while in jail, but released with the understanding that he was going to follow up with medical professionals. Uh, being homeless and addicted to, the, to drugs the way that he is, that follow-up did not occur. So he now has a permanent disfigurement in his neck, and that will also be very apparent in the video that you're going to see. Um, I don't know if I have too much else to say. It's just, uh, I hope you enjoy the conversation that I had with Scott. It's something that I'm very proud that I was able to do. Um, I would like to do more of this in the future. Um, although I don't think I know as many people out there as well as I know Scott. So we'll see how that goes. But for now, enjoy the conversation I, conversation I had with Scott. Um, I'll talk to you later. All right. Uh, it's kind of awkward because we've already been talking for a couple minutes. Yeah. Um, but this is me, Ben, and this is my buddy, Scott. Uh, if you guys have been watching the channel for any period of time, you've met Scott before. Seen Scott at various states of mind, right? Have yes. you seen the videos that you're in? Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, like the first one. What was going on in that first video that you were in with me? I was messed out. I was really bad out there on uh, meth and fentanyl. And I had what they call a, f uh, a fentanyl attack. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just couldn't control my arms and stuff like that. That's why you see me moving my arms and stuff. And uh, I believe it's a, I believe it was because I. They say I'm allergic to fentanyl, mm -hmm. and that's part of the, the process. I reckon. Mm -hmm. Is it? Had you, were you locked up for a while before that? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I just did uh, 24 months in the workhouse. Mm -hmm. Or actually, 26 months in the workhouse. For like a felonious assault. Yeah, that's what you told me. Yeah, felonious assault. It was funny because I remember saying something. I was like, "Oh, so you did fel you felonious assaulted somebody?" And you said, "Allegedly." Yeah. <laughs> Even yeah, though you were right. high, you <laughs> said some was Yeah. It's funny. Do you think? <laughs> Do you think you had that reaction because your tolerance were so down because you hadn't been high for so long? Oh, yeah, yeah, and, you know, um, 
and I, I just got out and I went balls to the wall, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And it was just like, my body just didn't know how to, you know, accept the new things that was coming into my, yeah. you know, system and stuff. Were you an addict before you went to jail for that two years? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, before I ever went to jail, no. I came home from prison the first time, and I, I was an addict, you know? Mm -hmm. I became an addict in prison. Hmm. So, you know what I mean? I came home and I was addicted to Ultram and Neurotin. Yeah, they say they're non-narcotic pain pills, but I was still hooked on them, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And on the streets, they didn't really, it wasn't really hip to the Ultrams and the Rottens. So I got the next best thing, which was Percocet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then it went from Percocet to my next best thing, fentanyl. You know, meth, stuff like that. And, you know, so, it, I mean, I don't know. I, I blame myself. I take all the blame in the world for for my addictions and stuff because mm -hmm. my mom didn't raise me to be a drug addict. Yeah. Well, I know that a lot of <clears throat> well, there's no there's no question, no doubt about it. Once you get addicted to these things, it's a physical addiction. Like your your body gets physically ill if you don't have these drugs, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um. Can Can you tell people what uh, withdrawals feel like? No, oh, it's the worst, man. Uh, you know, puking. Number two, you know, uh, um, body aching. Just don't want to do nothing. You're cramped up. It, you know what I mean? It's, you're miserable. Mm -hmm. I'm like the biggest bitch in the world. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Excuse my language, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's the true, true thing, you know? Once I'm without for such a period of time, oh my God, it's the worst. How long does it take to for the withdrawals to kick in after you've had if you had to cut off? I would say twelve hours. Really? Yeah. It's so like every twelve hours you got to keep some in you. Mm-hmm. Um, how much do you think you use a day? Um, probably forty dollars worth. Mm -hmm. which is Probably about a half a gram. Okay. You know what I mean? That's about. I talked to actually um, a guy that he he was dropping your name the other day, uh, Fat Boy. Yeah. Is he back? Is he out of jail yet? Uh oh. Yeah, I arrested him the other day. Did you? Yeah, <laughs> he, he, was, he was shoplifting. Oh, yeah. And he had a bunch of warrants. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, but he said he uses like a gram, gram and half a day. Yeah, it's funny because I just seen his girlfriend or his wife or whatever yeah. she is. She was staying in the band of something. Is, is she doing all right? I guess. I don't know. She didn't say anything about him being locked up? Or do you know yeah, that? Yeah, she said that he's locked up. How'd she find out? Because he didn't have a phone or anything? Nah, uh, she looked him up. Oh! I guess that's a good way to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Um. So, when you got out of prison and you were addicted to drugs when you came home, were did you move back in with your mom or... Yeah, at first, yeah, I, I moved in with my mom, and then I went back to prison. What'd you and, go back for? Uh, I don't know. I've never had no real crazy. All my cases was like drugs or uh, RSP and theft. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But uh, um, I don't know what it was for. That that time really? was my second number. Yeah, but uh, and I came home. And, you know, I can always go back to my mom because I've never burnt that bridge. And my mom loves me. Mm -hmm. And I love her. But, uh, it's just, I'm like, I'm 46 years old. I don't feel like my mom should have to take care of me no more. Yeah. Although she does, I still call her, Mommy, I need this. Or, hey, I'm hungry. And mom comes running to my rescue. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure it's hard for her too. Yeah, it is. Um, <clears throat> she, but well, is is it pretty much just the drugs that's keeping you out here like this? Yeah, it, you know what I mean. Uh, you know, like I said before, I recently broke my neck, so I really can't work. You know, 
I'm trying to, I'm in the process of trying to get some SSI mm -hmm. or some disability or whatever, but that takes time, you know, and stuff. But I, I mean, myself, if I'm using drugs, I will not go to my mother's house. No way. Mm -hmm. It's a big no no. Like when you're high? Yeah. Well, yeah. and you're pretty much, you keep it on a trickle at all times, right? Yeah. Um, is you're just using like enough fentanyl to keep you from getting dope sick? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Do you still use meth? Not like I used to, no way, yeah. but I mean occasionally. What's what's stopping you? Like how, is it your mindset? No, it was me watching these videos. Really? Yeah. I said, man. That's man. interesting. You know. I, um, I get a lot of criticism for putting those videos on the internet. Why? Uh, people think that I'm exploiting people. I mean, I kind of felt like, in some ways, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I mean, I was high out of my head, and I might have said a few things that was I probably shouldn't have said, mm -hmm. or could have got me put in some situations. Out here on the street? Yeah. But for the most part, that ain't your fault. That's yeah. my fault. Well, mm -hmm. my, my take on it is I like to show what these drugs do to people so that people don't want to do them mm -hmm. you know yeah. um my perspective and you can tell me what you think about it is that i don't know 90 percent of the problems that we have in our society right now at least on the street where i work are caused by drugs you know um mm -hmm. you got all the all the prostitutes out there that are living in uh, trap houses and getting beat up, raped, kicked to the side of the road. They're all addicted to drugs and drugs is what drives them. Um, you got the dope boys out there shooting people, killing people, doing all that kind of stuff. And then you got people like you that you're a good person. You're a, good, you're a great guy. Everybody out here knows you. Everyone says good things about you. The gas station people talk good about you. Everyone talks good about you, <clears throat> but you're so addicted to drugs that it's got you in this state where you know, you're not, you're, you're not living like you should be living. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, and I, so I want to show people what these drugs do to people so that they don't do them. So we don't have these problems anymore. Um, I don't know what, um, what's stopping you from going to rehab or something? I'm scared of the, I'm for real scared of the withdrawal, scared of you know what I mean? What what may happen? You know, because I've withdrew before in the workhouse, and I'd much rather be dead. Yeah. Than go through that. Don't they give you something when you're in rehab to help you deal with the withdrawals? Yeah, uh, they do. But I mean, I I've never been to rehab, so I really mm -hmm. don't know. But uh, I heard that they'll give you like some boxing or whatever, mm -hmm. like that, which helps but it takes a couple of days for the you know the fentanyl to get out of your system or whatever mm -hmm. you know so i mean yeah i mean i, I reckon you can say they, they do help you or whatever but. have you actually gone and talked to any of the outreach places um i think you told me about a place over on sullivan avenue yeah i was gonna take you down to the hope center and i didn't find you the next day yeah, but um, I ended up going there. Okay. And I did talk to people. You know, I got a real big problem with, you know, I, I learned about addiction by my hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. And everybody that I talked to learned, by, learned about addiction through a book. Yeah. I don't feel like that's that's the same thing. Most people down at like the Hope Center and Jordan's Crossing, though, they've dealt with it. Yeah. Their families have been through it. You know me. I'm not bad. Best I got. Um, I gave the last ones to somebody else that was in my truck a minute ago. Man, I just uh, um, since I broke my neck, I I can't feel like nothing. I can't really? feel no parts of my body. Yeah. And my nose would be running like Fort Knox. Yeah. And I, 
just sitting there like, okay. You had some snot run on your face the other day when I talked to you. Too. Yeah, my bad. <clears throat> no, that's fine. Um, yeah, I know that like Jordan's Crossing and the Refuge, they have people that are addicts and been through addiction and stuff. They're there to talk to people. Yeah. Is that not what you, did you not feel that way when you were talking to them? No, it's just that I feel like, you know, people that, you know, no, 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 I don't, nothing towards you or nothing, but mm -hmm. people that ain't never been in my shoes can't tell me don't do that. That's yeah. the way I look at it. Till you walk a mile in these tennis shoes, don't judge me. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And everybody's quick to put out a judgment on you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't work because my neck's broke. I'll go out here and fly a sign just so I make sure I have something to eat. Mm -hmm. And there'll be a man pull up next to me and be like, hey, get a fucking job, or excuse my language, yeah, or, you're fine. you know, get a job, or whatever. You don't know what I've been through. How do you know if I can work or not? You can't tell. I mean, anybody in their right state of mind can tell that there's something wrong with my neck. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, I mean, you've been out on the street for longer than what your neck was, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were out before that. Yeah. That was mostly the drug addiction. Yeah. Um, and I had talked to someone the other day who you probably, well, you, you do know her. I don't want to say her name. I don't want to out her. Um, <clears throat> she's in a wheelchair and only has one leg. Um, she said, because I told her, I was like, you know, you can get housing. With your disability, they'll, they'll give you a spot. Mm. She said that she is nervous about being in a place. Because, like, right now she's used to, she's living in a tent for so long that, uh, it just feels normal to her. Um, is that something that you deal with as well? Like you kind of, you're in your comfort zone and you're kind of afraid to change your world a little bit? Yeah, I mean, yeah, cause I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 to be honest with you, I don't know how to deal with it society for real mm -hmm. sober honestly i've never been at years that i was in prison of my whole adulthood either i was in prison or i was high so honestly i don't know how to deal with these people out here i don't mm -hmm. know how to deal with the nine to five job yep. you know what i'm saying i know how to get up hustle make the money for my next tie and that's that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or get up, hustle, make the money for to feed myself. Yeah. You know. Um, you know, there's a lot of people, people are always offering their input on how to fix problems, right? And mm -hmm. you, you deal with that because people that don't know how to help you. <clears throat> um, and I get, you know, we're told we need to put more money to solving the homeless problem in the country and this, that, and the other thing. Um, and I argue with people a lot that there's already a, a lot of money there. There's a lot of resources there. Has anyone ever come and talk to you about places to go where you can get the help to uh, get off the street? No. Um, have you ever been up Jordan's Crossing? Yeah. Have they Are they helping you get your social security card um, and stuff like that? Uh-uh. No? Uh. Do you um, Do you have a case manager or anything for uh. mental health? Have no. you ever gone to Southeast? No, but I need to. For real. Um, does the React team talk to you? They have talked to me. Uh, it's been a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, they have talked to me. Do you know how to get a hold of them? I mean, I'm sure I could because I carry. Yeah. But I don't... I mean, because you have personal friends. Yeah. Do you have a phone that works? Uh-uh. But you can use one if you need to? Man, it's real hard to find a phone. Really? Yeah. Well, you know that you can always flag us down and we'll help you. Oh, yeah. Um, but there's there's a tremendous amount of resources out there to help get people off the street. Um, but kind of like what you were saying, there's a lot of people that they're afraid <clears throat> afraid to try to change because they're you're dealing with what you know now. Yeah. And then changing to what you don't know is what's the scary part. Yeah. Um, what do you think we could do as a society, as a culture, to try to have fewer homeless people? Like, to prevent people from being in your position or 
to help you get into a spot. Like, what do you think we could do? I mean, I think, I think, well, I think that you can attack the problem before the person gets mm -hmm. to that. You know what I mean? Gets to that point in their life. You know what I'm saying? Where, okay, just say I work a job and I pay rent every month. Well, I just lost my job. Now the rent ain't getting paid. Now what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be homeless if I can't find another job, you know? So maybe if there's more uh, resources before. To help people get jobs and yeah. stuff? Yeah. Do you think, because, I mean, I've. I've done this for 10 years now. Um, I find an awful lot of people that don't want jobs. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, yeah. that are living in apartments, squatting with somebody else. And then they all get evicted out of that apartment because there's too much drug use going on. And the next thing you know, they're homeless. Right. Um, I don't know that jobs are the answer, to be honest. No, I don't. I'm not. I was just using that for instance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think there's, there's plenty of jobs out there. Yeah. Um... I don't know. I, and I do think stopping people before they become homeless is really important. And that's, I think people don't see that all the time because I do that. Um, if I got somebody that's in a hard way, especially like women with kids and stuff like that, um, a lot of domestic violence type situations, I will bend over backwards to try to make sure that that person gets help. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I'll even follow up with them almost on a daily basis to make sure they get help because. I don't want them and their kid. Well, first their kids will get taken away from them. Right. You know, and I, I don't want that to be a problem. But um, one I mentioned before, I think one of the biggest problems is drugs and stuff. I want to I want to get your opinion on some of that. There's a push nationwide to take drugs like meth and fentanyl and crack and all that other stuff, make them no no longer felonies, make them misdemeanors. Um, what do you think about that? I think that would help tremendously because I, I feel like a lot of people do the drugs to to try to get away with something. You know what I mean? That's us. You know, we're the bad guys and the cops are the good guys. And that's us trying to defeat the cops. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whereas, you know, if they don't, if they look at it like it ain't a big freaking deal, then... You know, maybe. Um, do you do you think less people would try them in the first place if it wasn't a big deal? Yeah, really, really do. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, when it comes, I know that fentanyl is incredibly addictive. Um, with crack and meth. What's the addiction like on those? Like, is it like instant, or is it you do it for a while and then you can't stop? No, I've never really been um, real addicted to mm -hmm. crack or meth. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It was just, you know, something that you do. Is it's it's an upper, so mm -hmm. you know what I mean. You can do it for three days and quit for three years. You know what I'm saying? And my eyes, I mean, I know people that are hooked on the meth or hooked on the mm -hmm. crack and stuff like that. And I think it's more of a mind over matter type of ordeal. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you feel more like your head's more clear recently because you stopped using mess so much? Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. It's, it's, my eyes are starting to open up, and mm -hmm. you know, definitely know that I, I there's a there's a, there's a place that I want to be, and I you know, and I mean I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. Me doing fentanyl or whatever ain't the answer. You yeah. know what I'm saying, but. For the time being, it's, it's, you know, it's the answer mm -hmm. for my problems and stuff, so. Um, we were talking about being homeless before I turned on the camera and kind of how you like to live by yourself instead of living in groups of people. Mm -hmm. Do you think most people out here would rather live by themselves or live in a group? A lot of them probably don't live in a group because they feel like more protected or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like the next person's got their back. I don't really care about that too much. Do you think that's more just a you thing, or do you, have people done things to you that make you feel that way? 
it's just a trust issue, like, you know, like, I don't, you know, I don't mean to say it, I don't mean, I just don't really give my trust of, to people real easy, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken care of you. Yeah. Best I can. I can't do everything for you. Right. But I try to take care of you. Yeah. Uh, it means a lot to me that you trust me. It really does. Um, yeah. And that you introduced me to your friends. I don't know who that one guy was. B. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you were like, because I, I try not to talk to you when I see other people around. Yeah. But uh, when you introduced me to him, that was cool. Uh, it made me feel good. Yeah. Um, how long have you actually been homeless? Um, for about... 16 months. Okay. And that's only because that's about how long you've been out of jail? Mm hmm So prior to that, you weren't homeless at all? No. What, have you ever had a regular job? I mean, yeah, but don't ask me when, because it was yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. So most of your jobs, was that just when you were selling dope and stuff back yeah. then? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Man, what do you think could have been different in your life that would have prevented this from happening? Like, I got a big problem, you know, uh, much like stuff that I found out that I was older that I feel like if I'd have known all throughout like my childhood and, and and stuff like that like you know just how my dad treated my mom you know that's, that plays plays tricks on my head man i'm sorry on well, my best friend killing himself you know but that was when i was 15 years old and believe one thing it still bothers me to yeah today. i never had that happen when i was a kid but i was in the military i was overseas and i lost some friends and I get pretty upset about it still, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that stuff's gonna bother you. Yeah. Um, Man, what, it's crazy, because Mick, Mickey was my best friend. <clears throat> His dad was a Columbus cop. Really? Yeah. Hmm. What, what's your relationship been with the police? I mean, ever since you were in high school, you've been in and out of prison. Yep. Um, are, you, are you generally, have you generally been afraid of the police? Or if you just, I don't know. I mean, you know, when you're doing wrong, you try to stay away from them, mm -hmm. try to stay out of their eye or whatever. But, you know, uh, for the most part, you know what I mean? I don't deal with them unless they want to deal with me. Yeah. yeah so. <clears throat> like, have you ever, have you, and, and since you become homeless and stuff, um, what's the, overall perception of the police amongst like the homeless people you know stay away from them you know yeah. <laughs> i mean do you feel like the police are out to get you always looking for a reason to hem you up get you arrested or anything mm. sometimes but like i said before you know if, if i'm i'll stick my chest out when if i'm doing wrong out here or whatever you know and you catch me doing wrong you're doing your job yeah. I can't hate you for doing your job, you know. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I I don't know. Cuz like I'm I'm a cop out here and I'm generally not looking for a reason to hem somebody up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, I'd rather not. I like I'd rather you just move on, you know, mm -hmm. me not have to deal with you at all. Um and sometimes people force the issue. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just I don't I don't think most people understand that. Uh, that interaction and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. I was just curious if you guys because you guys obviously you see us a lot And yeah. we've been all up in you guys's business a lot lately because of some stuff that's happened, you know uh, I, I'm saying is okay. Yeah, I fly a sign or whatever to get a few extra dollars or whatever But I ain't bothering nobody when I do that mm -hmm. the, the time where I get pissed is when the police or start, you know, bothering me with it. Cause I had an officer 
She wrote me a ticket one day for flying a sign. The very next day, she was, she was writing me the same ticket. Hmm. What the sense was that? I mean, I, I don't know. I just... You know her name? No, I don't know. She was, I think she was a rookie. Oh. Uh, she a little black girl? Yeah. All right. She doesn't have a job anymore. She doesn't? No. <laughs> oh, man. Does that make you feel better? Yeah. <clears throat> um, did you go to court on this? Yeah, and the judge looked at me and said, I cannot believe that they wasted a piece of paper on this. How'd you get down to court? I took a bus. Oh. I paid a little money to get on the bus, and I went to court. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, man, I don't know. It. I don't know if I had anything I really else was really looking to learn. Um, you've you've lived in different times between a tent and like abandons and stuff like that. Mm. Um, and you got a regular spot right now. Does how what's gonna happen? Like you think you're gonna get kicked out of there? Yeah. It's eventually. just a matter of time. Yeah. Is it a nice abandon? No, not really. It's no. pretty bad. Has it been in vacant for like a long, long time? Yeah. And it's well, I'm not gonna talk about where it is. Um, so it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a while before anybody busts you out of there. Oh, uh, <laughs> you think? Yeah, I hope so. Um, what's your plan, though? I mean, because you you don't want to be in this position forever. No, I you know. I don't, How are you gonna I, get out of it? I got correct my incorrects a lot of them. What if you? How are you gonna do that? I mean, first thing first, stop using. You know. Mm-hmm. How are you going to stop using? Sooner or later, I'm going to stick my chest out and, you know, just be like, you know what? It's time, you know what I mean? I can't continue doing this. You, you think know? you can do it on your own? Right now, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm not going to see in a lot. If I didn't have this, I'd be in so much pain. I don't believe I could yeah. walk. You know I've, what I mean? I believe you, especially because of your injuries and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why I think you're not going to be able to do it on your own. Yeah. You're going to need to reach out to the people that you need to reach out to. If you need to call Carrie, call her. If you see me around, you can, I'll help you out. <clears throat> Get you the cards. I can drive you down to the place. Um, Refuge is a really good one. I can drive you down there to talk to them. I can drive you down there right now to talk to them if you want. Um, there's even a place on Broad Street. Um, I'm going to go talk to them myself and see what their process is. I know for them, you can't, you have to be sober. Like, you can't be high when you walk in the door. Right. Um, the refuge, though, they, they're the ones that like to send people down to that farm. Mm-hmm. You know, they put you to work and get you clean, get mm-hmm. you a job before they release you back out. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty good one. But, I mean, that's kind of... The big thing is a lot of people say the same thing that you're saying. They say, I'm going to, I got to get myself clean so I can go do this. Mm-hmm. The, the problem is you need to ask for help to get yourself to that point. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to do it on your own. That's, that's why you're still here. Yeah. Do you, do you enjoy your life right now? I'm not going to lie to you, man. I'm the most miserable individual that there is. It's just I don't express it the way other people yeah. express it. No, you're always you're always smiling. <laughs> you know, you're always smiling. You're always happy-go-lucky. Um, but like, what if you're as miserable as you are? What would it take to make you take that next step? I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know. You know what I mean? I I, I just think one day I'm just going to wake up and be like, you know what, I'm done with this. I'm cool. You know what I mean? But like you said, I can't do it on my own. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So eventually I'm going to have to reach out to somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know? It takes a couple tries for most people. Yeah, and that's my biggest thing is I'm scared to death to fail. Yeah? Yeah, because I'm not a good failure (laughs) at all because... I fail at things. You go way off the ledge. The other yeah. Time. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's like 
playing a football game, you know, if you lose, hey, there's going to be a loser and there's going to be a winner. Mm-hmm. And I don't like to be that loser. Yeah. You know? Well, maybe you're thinking about it the wrong way. <clears throat> like, uh, it's just a hard road, you know? And if it was easy, everybody would do it. Right. And, you know, you're going to you're gonna try and you're going to stumble, but don't look at a fail a stumble as a failure. You mm-hmm. fall down, you get back up, right? Right. Um, like, don't, like, this guy, did I tell you about the guy that I met this morning? I met a guy this morning um, when I was driving down to the west side tonight, today. He was one on Hague Avenue walking. He's dragging his one foot. He's walking really slow. And uh, I went to some homeless camps and stuff, was talking to some folks. And then I saw him again, like an hour and a half later, still walking down Hague. So I, I was like, hey, man, you want to ride? And uh, he was telling me that in 1994, he was on his way to a crack house with pockets full of money. And he got jumped. Um, these guys stomped his head and he got a brain injury out of it. He was in a coma for six months, had to live for a couple of years in a nursing home. But he went from a wheelchair to a walker to a cane and now he's walking down the road. It might take him two hours, but he's doing it, you know, and he could have quit at any time and nobody would have cared. But he's realizing kind of the harder his life is, the harder he's going to push through it. You kind of, kind of get to that mindset where you know what you need to do is going to be incredibly hard, but use that difficult situation as motivation. Like this is something that's really hard, and almost nobody can do it, but you're the one that's going to do it. You know, that's mm. that's how I look at it. Yeah. Like if you know it's hard going in, All right? So just because it gets harder doesn't mean you need to quit or looking at it like a failure. Um, you just got to keep getting back up, man. Yeah. Um, it, is there any, is there anything that would happen to your life that would make you even worse that you're like I've got to fucking I've got to do it now? I don't think my life can get any worse than what it is. For yeah. Real. I That's, think I'm at rock bottom. When they say you got to be get to rock bottom before you can start going back up. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've been knocking on that door for quite some time, and it's time to. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I got to <laughs> grow up and, you know, do what my loved ones want me to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your mom's reached out to me before as well. Yeah. So I haven't spoken to her myself, just I've talked to her through Carrie. Yeah. Um, I would, I don't know, I'd be happy to help you do it any way that I can. All right. Um, do you want to go talk to anyone today? Um. Not today, but okay. maybe in the future. In All right. The well, future. Every time that I see you, I'm going to harass you about it. I know. <laughs> and, and I'm cool with that. You know yeah. what I mean? I would. Well, and, you know, maybe some motivation that might help is uh, your mom's not getting any younger. Yeah. I don't like. My mom's always full. I know. But. It'd be cool to have, let her have her son back before she's too old to enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the reasons I got out of the military. Is because uh, I was I was overseas. I was making good money. I was working as a contractor. And uh, my grandparents were getting older. My grandparents were really important to me. I wanted to come home so I could be with them before they passed away. Mm. You know? Um, and I was able to do that. If I had kept doing what I was doing, I would have made good money. I would have been overseas. I, and I enjoyed doing what I did. I was really good at it. But, uh, you know, I had to make some sacrifices so that they could enjoy me being around. Because, you know, you're, you're part of your mom. You're part of her happiness, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure it would bring her a tremendous amount of happiness to see you get back on your feet, man. Mm-hmm. I think everybody would. Is there anything else that you would just like to tell people about your situation or your life or anything that you think would help help somebody else either not get in this position or if they are in this position help survive I mean if you if you're out there and you're straight and you feel like you're going into the same position that I'm in you know reach out to somebody before it gets to the point that I'm at 
Because once you get to my point, it's like 10 times harder to, to drop everything, you know, and to straighten up. You know what I'm saying? So before you get to the situation that I'm in, lose it or reach out to somebody or do, you know, do whatever you got to do to stay on that right path. Because, man, I'll tell you, you know, it's all fun and dandy while you're out, you know what I mean, for a couple of days or whatever. But once you form the addiction, then it ain't fun and dandy, you know what I mean? That's something you got to have day in and day out, you know. So, all right. I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Uh, this is awkward because you and I are friends, and I'm... I'm interviewing you like I'm like we're not friends, mm -hmm. but you know I just it's part of what I have to do to make the video work. Um, I'm gonna end it now. We're gonna hang out for a little bit. So.